All right, so good morning to all our classrooms and good afternoon to our speaker today. A little bit of a cross-world fun experience we've got going on. My name is Jesse and I am with Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants. If you're joining us for the first time, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. And I wanna say a huge thank you again to all our classrooms live on YouTube, on Facebook, for continuing to join us as we celebrate and showcase amazing speakers and explorers from around the world. We know it's crazy times for classrooms, but we really appreciate it, and we hope you guys are having a fantastic time with us. So today is really, really exciting. Over the last few months, we've had the chance to do a scattering of really awesome lemur programs, but today is World Lemur Day, so we are going all in with five incredible programs on lemurs, on lemur conservation, live in Madagascar from across Canada and the United States and beyond. So thank you so much for beginning our fantastic lemur celebrations with us. I'm going to begin by turning it over to Executive Director of Planet Madagascar, Dr. Travis Steffen who's going to do a special introduction today and turn it over in just a minute. So Travis, thank you so much for joining us and take us away. Hi everyone. I just want to say thanks Jesse and uh, Exploring by the Sea Your Pants for, for hosting these events. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I got my lemurs in the back over here. Oop, there we go. Um, yeah, thank you very much for allowing us to share our, our story and our, our work with lemurs and, and conservation and people in Madagascar. It's my absolute pleasure to introduce to all of you uh, Mami Raza Fitzalama. I met Mami in 2010. He worked uh, as a researcher with me on my PhD project. He himself has a master's level degree in paleontology and anthropology with a focus on primatology, meaning he studies primates, in this case lemurs. Uh, he studied mother-infant relations. And when we were doing uh, working on my research project, we were sitting with our feet dangling over an erosion scar, um, which was caused by some deforestation. And we asked ourselves and each other what we wanted to see happen for Madagascar. And mommy wanted to see forests and lemurs exist so that his children and their children could see them. And so together we came up with the idea of Planet Madagascar. And since that moment, he's been helping me and, uh, and lemurs and forests um, uh, survive in the wild. Um, he helps me do all my projects and without him I couldn't do anything in Madagascar and um, he's now an internationally recognized conservationist, an award-winning conservationist, and he's the heart and soul of our operations in Madagascar. Go ahead, Mommy. Okay, thanks Travis. Hi everyone. Ha Happy World Lemur Day. Today, I'm going to talk about what Planet Madagascar does in Madagascar. But before that, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Mami Raza Fitzalama. I'm the in-country director of Planet Madagascar. I work for this organization since 2015. I live in Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar. I studied science, especially primatology, as uh, Travis said, at the University of uh, Antananarivo. The question is why I decide to work in conservation. It is important to save Madagascar's biodiversity because of its high species richness and endemism that deeply threaten because of human activities. For example, 105 species of 113 lemur species are threatened, which means critically endangered, endangered or vulnerable by extinction. Also, Madagascar is one of the poorest country in the world, unfortunately, because 92% of Malagasy people live under two dollars a day, and which lead the most of rural community really on natural resources to survive. Doing conservation in Madagascar is challenging. So it's clear that we could not protect biodiversity without considering people who depend on the natural resources on a daily basis. Well, I would like to take part of the challenge to save our amazing biodiversity for the next generation. I would like to improve life and alleviate poverty of rural community 
that depend on natural resources for their survival. Now, let's talk a bit about what Planet Madagascar does in Madagascar. So first, Planet Madagascar is a conservation, education, community development, inspired by our executive director, PhD research project, studying the impact of forest fragmentation on lemur survival. We are a technical partner of Madagascar National Park here in Madagascar in terms of biodiversity conservation in Ankarafanska National Park. Now, let's talk about what we do as education. Every year, with our partner, Madagascar National Park, and other organizations that work on conservation, we celebrated together the World Environment Day within Ankarafanska National Park. As you can see on the photo, my, myself uh, giving a gift for, uh, for a primary school uh, in one of primary school in Ankarafanska National Park. We raise awareness and ownership of local community to protect the environment during the celebration. Now, let's move to Lambas for Lemurs. Lambas for Lemurs is an education program created by uh, Travis Stephens, our executive director and, uh, and uh, a colleague. But in 2016, we visited uh, 12 community in and around Ankarafansk National Park to educate them how to protect lemurs and forest. We spread the message that help people understand the link between forest and lemurs and how to protect them via Lambas. Also, we teach them the link between forest and lemurs and human, as I said, and why saving forest and lemurs benefits human. During that event, you can see on the next photo, please, Travis, that we did uh, educated uh, adult and kids as well. We work in collaboration with the primary school, primary and secondary public school within Ankarafanska National Park. Now let's move to our uh, responsible fire day. Through our fire management program, we host a responsible fire day every year. The goal is to raise awareness of people who live surrounding the man our management zone to protect forest and lemur from fire. And to burn responsibly if they must clear their land using fire. Because uh, some uh, people in the rural community uh, burned the area to clear uh, their land before uh, uh, plantation. In 2018 and 2019, we visited 40 communities in and around Ankara Fansko National Park to screen our educational film to raise awareness and to protect forest and lemurs from fire. As I say, fire is the biggest threat in the west and the northwest part of Madagascar. Now let's move to our conservation project. We have two conservation project, uh, two type. We have two project. So the first is the fire management project and the forest restoration project. Let's start with the fire management project. Fire, 
Fire is the direct threat that affects biodiversity in Ankara-Fanska National Park. It's a big threat because it destroys forests very quickly. To address this issue, we create our fire management project called Atiala Salama, which means healthy and good forest in Malagasy. To alleviate the threat that affect biodiversity in Ankara Fansko National Park, as I said, we create that fire management project. We have started in 2015 and we run it until now. We hire three teams of six persons from our free core community to do patrols. Each team do for, uh, patrols four times a week within our fire management zone. Let's move to the next uh, photo, please. Thank you, Travis. Now, every year, as you can see on the photo, we cleared 15 kilometers of fire break to protect forest fragmented and continue forest from fire. And uh, we fight fire when uh, it occurred within our management zone with the local community and partner. Well, let's move to the second uh, project, which is the forest restoration project. We start our forest restoration project in 2018. We work on two types of forest restoration. First, we restore fragmented landscape to create corridors that connect existing fragments to continuous forest to increase Lemur's range. So far, 47,000 seedlings have been planted within 75 hectares. This year and for 2021, we plan to plant 60,000 trees within our plantation zone. Secondly, we plant trees to reduce and control the impact of erosion. We work with our core community and the local association. So far, we did plant 2,000 trees within our community area. Now let's talk a bit about the community uh, development. We help created a women's cooperative called Tuntul Maitsu in 2017 that focused on sustainable agroforestry and forest restoration. Every year, the women co cooperative products seedling within their nursery to help planet Madagascar achieve our forest restoration effort. We work closely to achieve our goal together. If you want to hear learn more on what we do, besides I explain, uh, uh, besides I explain, uh, you can uh, follow us on. You can visit our uh, website at www.planetmadagascar.org. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mommy. What a fantastic presentation. Um, and Travis, if you want to end the screen share so we can have a bit of a conversation and dive in with our question period, that would be fantastic. So yes, uh, Mommy, thank you so much for that. That was a beautiful talk and a great uh, lead in to our question period. We've got over 300 kids tuning in right now. So we have six plus classrooms on YouTube. We've got five live, bunch of students from all over the place, including University of Toronto. So welcome in to everyone on YouTube, Facebook, and live. Looking very forward to your questions. If you're in YouTube, start typing them in the chat bar. We'll take as many as we can. But I'm gonna go to Glenview, Illinois from Ms. Michael's class to kick us off. Ms. Michael, if you wanna come in for a question, go for it. 
Sure. Um, I'm going to ask um, Henry. Henry, are you there? Unmute yourself. Okay. And Henry had a question. You want to say your question? Oh, yeah. Um, I actually have a new one that I really wanted to say. Okay. It's, what are you guys doing about keeping the lemurs away from the fire that's been happening? Yeah. Great question. So Molly, if you didn't catch that, how do you keep the lemurs away from the fire? You're lighting these fires, you're making these fire breaks. How are you keeping lemurs away? Is that a something that you need to worry about or not? Uh, I didn't hear, can you say yeah, again? Yeah. So when you're making these fire breaks, you're using fire to create the fire breaks. How are you keeping lemurs away from that? How are you making sure lemurs aren't in the fire? <laughs> Uh, because uh, we create the fire break in the in the savanna, not in the forest, because uh, lemurs live only inside the forest, and we create the fire break on the savanna, uh, on the edge of the forest. Fantastic. So it's a little bit of a different ecosystem where they would. Yeah, that's perfect, mommy. It's not something where they would run into the fire in that situation. You, when you saw the picture of the savanna with the termite mounds and the big red gap between the grasses, lemurs don't live in those habitats. So great first question, Henry. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to go to Miss McKinnis's class. They're joining us in Cumberland Center in Maine. So Miss McKinnis's group, come on in. Hi, my name's Oscar. And my question is, what is their most dangerous predator and why? Ooh, the most dangerous predator for lemurs, mommy. Okay, thank you for the question. The most uh, predator for lemurs is uh, the raptors uh, and then the, the fusa. Yeah. The fusa, yeah. So I'm going to bring this into the broadcast so people can see these names. So raptors, birds of prey, will often prey on lemurs, and the FUSA. So I encourage everyone when they're done this broadcast, look up F-O-S-S-A on Google. It's a really, really cool animal. It looks like a sort of a turbo weasel, a very scary tree weasel that hunts uh, lemurs. It's been covered in a few of our broadcasts before. So I encourage you guys to check that out. All right, let's head to uh, Ottawa for Miss Hebert's class. You guys have a question for us, just demute your microphone and come on up to so Ms. Hebert's class. You're good to go. Mm -hmm. Time, guys. Go. And yeah, take your time. There you go. Uh, we wanted to know um, I know that lemurs are being um, killed or taken out by by uh by uh, people are the people using them to for their food for their what are the people using them for yeah yeah so if you didn't catch that why are people taking lemurs out of the wild is it for food is it for pets why remove lemur from their habitat okay thank you for the question uh for the rural uh, community people uh eat lemurs and uh, but uh, for but uh, some people uh, use lemurs as a pet as well. Yeah. So a bit of uh, a bit of both. Great question, guys. All right. Both, yes. I'm going to go to Miss McLaughlin's class on YouTube. So they're joining in in Niagara. Um, how many different kinds of lemurs are there, Mommy? Uh, do you mean in uh, in Ankarafanske? Uh, we can start with that. How many species in the park and then in all of Madagascar as well? Okay, great. Uh, we have uh, eight species of uh, lemurs in Ankara Fanske. And uh, in total, we have uh, 113 uh, in Madagascar, in the whole Madagascar. Wow. We're going to be able to cover uh, a few of those species on today's broadcast. And again, I encourage you to look up some of the amazing species that Planet Madagascar gets to work with and protecting. Uh, but check out some of our sessions later. We're going to see some live lemurs today in some of our talks. So hopefully you get a chance to tune in. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go to Ms. Ardalian's class. Uh, they're joining us in Scarborough, Ontario, kindergarten group. So just demute your microphone 
and uh, you can share a question on behalf of your class, Ms. Erdelian. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go to Ms. Erdelian's class. Hi there. Yes, class. They are wondering, Ms. Erdelian. Yes, Ms. Erdelian and her class. We are a virtual kindergarten in Toronto. Uh, the question, the most asked question was, Africa is so hot. Why do lemurs have the fur and live in Africa where it's not cold at all? Can you explain us? What's the purpose of the fur? Yeah. <laughs> so if you didn't catch that, the question is, what is the purpose of their fur? So they're wondering, Africa is so hot, Madagascar is such a hot country. Uh, why have this thick coat of fur to keep you warm? <laughs> uh. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Travis, if you want to come in on that as well. <laughs> well, my, mommy also knows that actually it gets very cold in Madagascar. And so in, uh, in, in the park that we work in, although it's a, it's a deciduous dry forest, it can get up to 42 degrees, but it can get down to eight degrees Celsius, which is if you don't have fur would be quite cold. So often they're adapted to the worst case scenario. But the fur is, um, you know, and a lot of them are, especially the daytime ones, their fur is light in color, so it doesn't absorb a lot of uh, heat, um, helps reflect some of the heat. Um, and you can see that with the shafakas, their, um, their backs are white, so they can, they can probably reflect a lot of heat that way. Um, but being a mammal, they all have fur, and so they, it, it, it's just not as thick as you might think in terms of, um, um, uh, how, how, especially on the dry side and the wet side of the country, it also gets much colder. And so they're, they actually have dense, more densely packed fur, or it, it's really hair. Um, but uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's colder than you think. <laughs> uh, there you go. Thank you, Travis, for chiming in there. Uh, so let's head to Dartmouth, Nova Scotia for Ms. Grant's class. If you guys have a question for us, and I know you do, come on up, share it with us. Um, my name is Mason. My question was, um, how many black stripes do ringtail lemurs have? <laughs> so, mommy, what we're asking is on ringtailed lemurs, and I know we don't have any in Carafans National Park, but people love ringtailed lemurs, they're the best. So, on their tail, how many stripes do they have? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. One, two, <laughs> Travis, uh, what do we think? 29, 500? I actually uh, don't know. Not, not 500, uh, maybe between, uh, to be honest, I didn't count that yet, but something between uh, five to, to 10? Five to 10. I'm gonna go on Google and look up pictures and I'll try and get you guys an answer in a minute, okay? Um, but what I want to do now is share a question from YouTube, a couple questions from YouTube, and then we'll go back to all our live classrooms for another question. So for our live groups, think out some more questions. Um, but I want to share this one with you, Mommy. Tavin in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, they want to know, what are you doing to prevent people poaching and capturing lemurs? Is there something that we can do or that you guys at Planet Madagascar are doing? Yes, uh, through education. Uh, we educated uh, people. That is first thing. Secondly, we work uh, together. We work very close with uh, the local community, uh, and we provide a uh, job for them. We 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 work together to to protect the biodiversity. I mean, we involve the local community in our uh, conservation effort. Yeah, that's a beautiful, you know, it's something that we cover in so many of our broadcasts, the importance of incorporating local communities into supporting conservation efforts. For so long, conservation was where people came from Canada and the United States and from Britain, and they went to countries and said, this is how you need to do conservation. This is how we've got to do it. And now it's much more of a focus on making sure that to the local communities involved, that there's a, an interest, a vested interest in protecting the species, protecting that habitat. And it's led to success stories all around the world. So Planet Madagascar is doing some really amazing work in that area. You've got a chance to see some of that today. And I think that's a really thoughtful question. So thank you so much to our classroom. Um, Ms. Dawsman has another great question. She's joining in Waterloo, Ontario on YouTube. How many people live in Madagascar? And is this impacting the ecosystem there? 
Yes, of course, uh, we are uh, 26, uh, 20, uh, within 26 million uh, people live in Madagascar. And um, as I explained before, most of uh, uh, the rural community are poor and uh, rely on the natural resources for to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, just as a comparison for that, I don't know if all our classes today can find Madagascar on a map, and I hope by the end of this broadcast you get a chance to look that up and find Madagascar, see how large it is, see where it is. But it's comparable in size, and Travis, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's comparable in size to Alberta with about the population of two-thirds of Canada, correct? Yep, that's right. Yeah, I don't know for a state if we can compare it to anything, Texas maybe. Same size as Texas, same size as France, um, and if you're in Africa, another African country, same size as Bots Botswana. Yeah, so a ton of people in, in a big area, it's one of the biggest islands in the world, uh, but with that need for for taking the local resource, like for a population that largely exists off the natural resources in the world, that could be a, a big impact, and that's something that we've seen over the last 50 years in Madagascar. Travis, I know, is going to speak to this later in one of his presentations, uh, but the idea that if you're burning down forest for charcoal, for land, for farming, um, that leaves fairly little intact habitat. Madagascar is one of the most um, degraded ecosystems in the world with some of the most unique uh, organisms. So it's a, it's a place that's in trouble, but I'm, I'm really glad we got that question and uh, nice to highlight population issues in, in our broadcast. So thanks. Travis, did you have anything more to say on that? or? But yeah, a lot of the about eighty percent of people live rurally, as as mommy mentioned, and the um a lot of the neat like it's easy to blame local people for destroying the forest, but really there there's no real bad actors in this situation. These are just people trying to survive and trying to make it through um their day to day lives, and so there's a lot of short term repercussions, uh, short term impacts that have long term repercussions. But most people are just trying to get through their day or their week, trying to get enough food for their families, which is totally understandable which is why Mommy um, and the team really focuses on working directly with people in communities to help sort of alleviate some of the poverty issues um, at the same time as working um, towards conservation. Fantastic, gentlemen. All right, uh, we're gonna take a question from Ms. Henson Hewitt's class online and then we'll go back to all our live groups. So Ms. Henson Hewitt's class, they wanted to know, how long do baby lemurs stay with their mom, Mommy? Okay, approximately two two years. Okay, fascinating. So we've, we've covered primates a lot in this broadcast. Humans are one of the longest, of course. Some of us stay 30, 40 years with our parents, um, but lemurs a, a couple of years. So I'm really glad we got it. Yeah, great question, guys. Awesome. All right, let's go back to Michael's class in Glenview. If you guys have a question for us, come on back in. Of course we do, lots of questions. Um, let's see, I have uh, Jaya, can you jump in? Unmute yourself and ask your question about uh, lemurs living in groups. Do they live in groups or and like do they work together like meerkats or are they independent? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, they live in group. Most of the diurnal lemurs live in groups and uh, the nocturnal lemurs uh, um, uh, work by, by themselves uh, are solitary, I mean. Yeah. yeah, that's fascinating, Mommy. So all, the, like most or all the nocturnal lemurs are independent, but the ones that are awake during the day all are together mm -hmm. in groups? Yes. Fascinating. If you get a chance ever in your lives to go to Ankara Fans National Park, you'll see Shifaka, so Zabumafu, a lot of you will know it as, uh, in fairly large groups uh, up in the treetops together with babies and a whole little family group. Um, and some of the smaller lemurs, you see them independently at night just to sort of eye shine. If you drive your car down the road and it catches mm -hmm. like a squirrel or a dog and you see the reflection in the eyes, a lot of lemur species are the same deal. Uh, and you can find them in the forest with a powerful flashlight. So really, really cool question, guys. All right, Ms. McKinnis' class, back to Maine. Go for it. Hi. Hi, my name is Avery. What can kids do to save the lemur? 
So what can kids do to save the lemurs? It's our big question. It's the one we always take at the end of the broadcast, but you beat us to it. Thanks, Avery. Can you say again, please? Uh, this yeah, yeah. So for our, our kids that are joining at home today across Canada and the United States, what can they do at home to help save lemurs? Ah, that's a very, very good question. <laughs> uh, uh, through the organization that work in uh, in lemurs conservation, which is uh, many in Madagascar, uh, you can help by uh, first sharing the the information about lemurs. That is, I think, that is the first one. First, that is uh, the big one. Yep. You you share the information about uh, what should do to protect lemur, what should do to to save lemurs, and uh, you can work with uh, the local organization that work uh, on uh, lemurs conservation in Madagascar. Yep. So education is the first step to any conservation effort, and that's what we're here for today, is to highlight some of the, the challenges facing lemur populations and uh, Malagasy ecosystems in general. So by virtue of being here, you're already taking part in and taking action. If you share the knowledge you learned today with your family and friends, it goes a long way. And again, I want to stress that Planet Madagascar is a charity. They do fantastic work. Um, you can check out, again, planetmadagascar.org. Um, and one of the nice things about Madagascar is that money goes a long way there. When you donate to charities in Madagascar, it helps enact conservation initiatives in a way that doesn't exist in some other countries. So I want to bring in Travis, if, if you have any more thoughts on this, to, to share with us on how kids can take part. And then uh, we'll go on. Yeah, and you can always contact um, uh myself or mommy at Planet Madagascar, we, we run all sorts of projects. So sometimes when we run those Lambas for Lemurs projects, it's the Lambas are the clothing, the, the, they look like a sarong or a sari. Um, maybe, maybe you could help us design that Lama for the next time. Um, we do projects with schools and kids in schools. Maybe we could set up a situation where kids here are communicating with kids in schools over there. That's something that doesn't get to happen for most of these rural schools. So there's lots of really great things you can try. Um, we're open to all sorts of ideas. We're a very small organization, so we rely very heavily on volunteers and donations. But but the main thing that mommy said is the most important. If you don't know about it, you can't protect it. So sharing that information or learning about it. And then when you get older, maybe going and visiting Madagascar and trying to go to see the communities that live near lemurs and meet the people that live near, near lemurs and uh, and get to know some of the lemurs yourselves um, by visiting the the parks and things like that. Uh, so there's lots of things you can do now, and as you get older, there's uh, there's even more. Fantastic, gentlemen. All right. Um, I'm going to go to Ms. Ardelian and Ms. Ebert's class in just a second. We just have a student standing right up in Ms. Grant's class. So Ms. Grant's group, uh, if you guys have a uh, hi, my name is Moira, and I just want to know what's the smallest lemur in Madagascar? Yeah, so Mommy, if you didn't catch that, Moira wants to know what the smallest lemur in Madagascar is. Yes, thank you for the question. The smallest one is the uh, Madame Bert's mouse lemur, yeah. which is very tiny, just around the... Uh, uh, 33 gram. Yeah. Uh, just as a comparison, if any of you have a pocket square, or if any of your teachers have a pocket square, a mouse lemur could fit inside the pocket square, could fit in mm -hmm. your hand quite easily. Um, whereas the biggest lemur, because we get this question a lot too, so I might as well ask, mommy, what's the biggest lemur and how big are they? The biggest one is the, the Indri, 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 and which is uh, around uh, 8 to 12 uh, kilogram. Awesome. I'm going to put the name of the injury on our uh, banner here. Another thing, you can look up fossa when you're done uh, as to see how cool the predators of lemur are. Check out injury and listen to their call. It's one of the most beautiful yeah. sounds in all of nature. There's very little to compare with it. So I encourage you guys to check that out and listen in when you're done. It'll really make this a, a, an exciting experience for you guys. All right, uh, Miss Arlene's class, I'll go to you first, and then Miss Ebert will take a few more on YouTube because we're doing great for time. So Miss Arlene, just demute your mic and uh, share a question with us. There you go. 
Hi there. So I don't know if you are able to see, but I shared the screen so you can see our work about the lemurs. So we did science reports about uh, what lemurs, how they look like. Um, and one of the questions that came up very often when we learned that they climb trees, can lemurs swim? Ah, can lemurs swim, mommy? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> uh, so what happens? Do they ever try to swim and fail or do they just not go near water at all? Uh, no, because uh, uh, a, riv uh, a river is uh, one of their uh, barriers so they can't, sweep, they can't cross the river. Yeah. Okay, so they're avoiding water to all means. But uh, thank you for the beautiful drawing, Ms. Artley, in class. Way to go for that. That was great, and what a great question. All right, uh, let's take a question from, oh, I like this, Miss Tishgraf's class. How smart are lemurs? Are lemurs real thinkers, mommy, or not? <laughs> uh, yes and no. Uh, first, uh, lemurs, uh, they do not use uh, uh, tools, but they are smart in terms of uh, foraging food and uh, 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 yeah, they are smart on uh, uh, looking for food and uh, to protect from a predator. Fantastic. You actually answered a whole bunch of other questions on YouTube. People were asking about them using tools and more. So uh, way to go. All right. Uh, a bunch of great questions here. Oh, so many questions. One thing we haven't covered too much today from Miss McLaughlin's class, are lemurs endangered species? Are they all endangered? Are some of them in danger? Can you tell us a little bit about their conservation status? That's a good question. Uh, some of them are critically endangered. And uh, some are endangered, some are vulnerable, and uh, some are least uh, concerned. Depend on uh, depend on the species, but most of them are all threatened. Yeah. To my knowledge, um, and and Travis uh, join in too. Lemurs are the most endangered group of definitely primates, if not mammals, in the entire world. Yeah, group of anything we measure, <laughs> and so the. Uh, they, they have that unfortunate distinction uh, in terms of a large group. There's smaller groups, things where there's only two or three species within the group that, that where all of them are endangered, but 90, I think we're at 95% of lemurs are threatened with extinction now. Jeez, so all the more reason to, to enact those conservation efforts that we got a chance to talk about a little earlier. And uh, yeah, thank you for the question. I'm glad we got a chance to bring it up. It's not a, not a happy story, but an important story to tell about uh, lemurs and, the, and their status. By the way, uh, just as a, a lighthearted follow-up to that, Nicola in Miss Michael's class says that ring-tailed lemurs have 13 rings on their tail. So I <laughs> went and found it. I don't know, that's awesome. Um, all right, Ms. Ebert's class, if you guys want to wrap us up with one question, I just demute your microphone and you are good to go. Are, are human diseases like COVID-19 affecting the lemur population? Yeah, great question. So, Mommy, if you didn't catch that, uh, can human diseases infect lemurs? Things like COVID-19 or other diseases that we have, can we pass them to lemurs? Uh, some uh, some disease uh, yes but uh, uh, I'm not sure for uh, I don't know for uh, to be honest for uh, COVID but uh, uh, lemurs can transmit uh, diseases to people and the same for uh, people to to lemurs. When are the when we get this question a lot when we have live animal pro, pro, pro <laughs> live animal programs I can speak English um, so basically the animals that are more related to us are more likely to be able to spread and share diseases so with primates things like apes monkeys lemurs uh, we are often able to share diseases with them one way or the other and the further in in distance in evolutionary history we get from animals the less likely you are very unlikely to give uh, a common cold or a flu to a sea slug but much more likely to a dog and much more likely to a primate. So that's a, a neat way of thinking about it for your classroom. 
Um, Mommy and Travis both uh, were nearing the end of the broadcast. Again, 300 kids from all over the place. I wanted to give you both a chance to see if you had any last message you wanted to share. All our kids today, something that they can take home with uh, about planet Madagascar, how they can help save uh, lemurs in Madagascar. So anything you two would like to share, go for it. Go ahead, Mommy. Okay, uh, first, uh, thank you for uh, for taking time uh, listening about uh, lemurs and uh, our conservation uh, effort in Madagascar. And uh, I hope that uh, you visit our country one day to see how amazing is uh, lemurs uh, in the wild. In the meantime, uh, please share information about lemurs and uh, work with uh, the organization that work in on lemurs conservation. Thank you. Thank you. Travis, anything to add? Yeah, I'm just going to share my screen real quick. I'm going to push the buttons. Push the buttons. Did that work? Yeah, beautiful. So this is what we're trying to protect. So I saw in the chat some people wanted to see pictures of lemurs. So these aren't. Uh, we, we're protecting eight of these species, um, and this is the, the biodiversity we see there. Lemurs go in all shapes and sizes from the size of a mouse lemur, which is about the size of an egg, all the way to the injury, which mommy talked about before. Um, some of them can jump eight to ten meters from tree to tree. Some are frugivores, some are folivores, some eat insects, some eat the gums and sap from trees. So this is the diversity of lemurs that exist, and these are actually relatives of us. So protecting them are protecting some of our shared evolutionary history. How you do that is complex, um, but it's not impossible. And people like Mommy work really hard to make this uh, make this possible. Um, and with efforts from from everybody who's who's ever worked with us, whether it was adopting a lemur or adopting a hector, donating a small amount of money, or just educating themselves or educating others about lemurs, has goes a long way to protecting these species. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, thank you so, so much, gentlemen, for a really, really beautiful presentation today. Uh, Mommy, uh, all November long, we're featuring local conservation heroes, people taking direct action to save species around the world. So thank you so much for being our, our teaser into the month of November uh, with a really beautiful story of all the work that you get to do today. Travis, thank you for all your insight uh, in leading Planet Madagascar. Uh, all our students, thank you guys so much for all your questions. Again, I encourage you all to check out planetmadagascar.org. Keep the learning going. Find out more about this incredible organization. And if you're keen to keep going on our lemur day, our next talk coming up in just 15 minutes, uh, Dr. Carrie Ann McGugan is going to be talking about her book, Chasing Lemurs and Her Own Adventures in Madagascar. So I hope you guys get a chance to come on in and check that out. Um, Mommy, what we do at the end of every broadcast, I'm going to bring in our live classrooms to say a big thank you and goodbye to Ms. Michael, Ms. Grant, and Ms. McKinnis. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.